Starvo, Starvo, Starvo. Now, there's no doubt he's been performing very well, dominating much of the meta. The results in the Living Legend points support that without question. Many hate him and think he's too good. On the other hand, others, myself included, think that right now is an overall healthy competitive meta. Opinions are opinions, feelings are feelings, and data is data. So after this last weekend's calling in Indy, we have a pretty valid data set from 400 plus top tier competitive players. So today in a working video, I wanted to look at the numbers from this weekend, do a bit of a comparison to the last time we did this back after Vegas, and see what we find. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and go again. A fabulous cast. Thank you very much for joining me today to go through some of the numbers from the weekend. And man, what a what a weekend it was. So not only did we have, obviously, the calling in Indianapolis and the, you know, the events associated with that, we also had a battle hardened and a skirmish for Blitz in the UK. Uh, that was really exciting to watch just everything happen over the weekend and see the reports come in. And yes, I got... I got multiple things wrong, didn't I, on my uh, Blitz tier list, so thank you for those who, who let me know. But no, it's, you, you put it out there and you get it wrong and you're going to hear about it, so fair enough. So before we get into this day, I want to remind everybody we are sponsored here by our friends over at FabDB.net. They remain the best resource available for all of us as Flesh and Blood players on the interwebs for collection management deck lists you can go and speaking of deck lists i'm sure the people are going to be uploading their deck lists from this last weekend so you can go on there you can get those go take them into felt table or tts or whatever and test them out test and iterate right that's the that's that's the key right make sure it fits your play style but you can go get those tested and you can get those on on fabdb so i want to thank them for continuing to sponsor us here when you're over there consider upgrading your account to unlock a whole bunch of additional features that will help you improve your game all right, so going into uh, the data today, actually before we get into the day today, I do wanna go back and talk a little bit about conversion rate, right? So many of you who've been here for a while know that that's been kind of an ongoing topic here, um, but, and it's become, kind of a, become a little bit of a joke between me and the Outcast Haven guys in a, in a friendly way, right? Anytime they talk about, it, they're like, oh, Andrew, I hope Andrew's not watching. Uh, but so the reason conversion rate came up was back during the chain meta, a lot of people, so conversion rate, by the way, if you're not familiar, basically it looks at, let's say a hero is 30% of the field and they make 50% of the top cut. You would say, okay, the conversion rate of the, that many players into the top cut was, was a gain. So that hero is very well positioned in the meta. Whereas somebody who came in with, let's say 30% of the field, but maybe only one or two or a couple of them made top cut. You'd say, okay, that, that hero's not positioned well in the field. So that's the idea of looking at the conversion rate is, you know, how many did you start with? How many have made it into whatever cut or whatever bucket you want to look at? The problem with conversion rate is that it's, it's a very good starting metric, but it starts to fall apart on the extremes of the numbers. And a lot of people, especially back in the chain days, they were using conversion rate of a large percentage of the field to say, well, He's, his conversion rate from field to top cut is really, really low, and therefore he's not broken, right? Whereas the reality was that once you get to a certain point, it's generally on 45% or so of the field, and you start eating each other, it's going to artificially deflate your conversion rate. And on the flip side, if somebody were to come in with one or two heroes and they would do well, they would obviously have a really great conversion rate, but that doesn't mean they're well positioned in the meta, right? They might have just had a good pilot or snuck one in. So anyway, that, that's the, the overall takeaway there is I'm not a huge fan of using that out of context. Now, we are going to be talking about it today because I'll go ahead and put it up right now. If you look at the meta breakdown, when you have a quote unquote healthy, or I should say, let's say balanced meta, like you do right now, right? You look at roughly 30% Bravo, 20% Prism, right? I mean, overall, I think it's pretty fair to say that looking at the numbers over the last month or so going through all of the different events, the peak pro quests, that it's been roughly 30 to 40%, right? And when you're in that range, 
your conversion rates start to become a lot more manageable and a lot more realistic. So I did want to, you know, make sure, and you can see the columns over there. I just wanted to make sure that those were were included because they provide a good starting point. So, all right, so we had 450, I think it was like 460 some players this weekend in Maine Swiss. Bravo was obviously the largest part of that. Um, I'll go ahead and throw up the conversion or the comparison to Vegas now, because why not? Because I thought it was funny that Prism was 90. Uh, sorry, the second place, Prism was 90, and then uh, last time Bravo was 90. So maybe it's the same player. No, it's, uh, either way. So Bravo, uh, Bravo Star, right? Bravo Star of the show versus not to be confused with Bravo OG, as I have him in this chart. Uh, he was 20% of the main field, uh, 32% of them converted into. Um, 32% of those converted into the day two, okay? Uh, and then the break, so remember, don't get the conversion rate confused with the field breakdown, right? The 41% of the field, but it was a 32% conversion rate into day two. And remember, day two in this case was not top 64. I, I know in my graphic there, I do have a 64. Um, I will, well, it's not there because I'm going to fix it before I post, but um, it was not top 64 cut. It was a X and two cut, right? X and two or so everyone who was X and two or better made it in. All right. We then see prism held relatively flat. She was 20% and then 24 per or sorry, 20% with roughly a 25% for a 24% uh, in the top in the in day two, she was 24%. And then in top eight, she was 25%. So she held relatively flat, which is kind of cool. Uh, Viserai, I think it's fair to say he's a little lower than I expected him to be. Um, maybe if you add him and Chain to get, maybe, maybe that's why. I don't know, but you know, basically once you get out of those top three, which I think we were pretty, pretty firm on. I think that's what we expected to see those top three be the main ones, the the, the biggest reps. Um, but I was a little surprised they were as low as they were. And then usually once you go below that, they, uh, you know, you kind of fall into the the lower range, right? So. Um, you compare that on the other hand with what the main field looked like in, in Vegas back in the, I mean, I, again, it's it's pretty, I think it's pretty well accepted that the chain meta was a pretty bad meta, right? It was very, very dominated by one person with maybe some positive, one hero with maybe some positive matchups into that. But by and large, that was considered to be an unhealthy meta, right? So if you go look at the you know numbers there, you have a really low conversion rate because the field was so highly imbalanced. Uh, and the top 64, who was 45% of that, you compare that to Bravo, who was 41% of the uh, top cut in uh, Indy. Now, one thing I do want to point out as we go through this is you have to make sure that you're looking at equivalent buckets, right? So one of the th what I like to look for primarily are the day two or the top 64 cut, whatever you want to call it, breakdowns. Because that's really looking at your overall, that's going to be looking at your stronger players playing into stronger players, right? Whereas Swiss, you have, you know, the sea of foam to a certain extent. Once you start cutting down that chaff, I really like to look at the 64 to 8, the, top, the day 2 to 8, whatever it may be. Because um, that's really, it really helps to baseline a lot more of your good strong players into your good strong players, right? That's not to say that everybody who went there is not a strong player, because obviously if you've got the balls to go, you think you're, you're you know what you're doing to a certain extent. But really looking at that uh, apples to apples. So if we go and then we look at the day two into the top eight, we see, you know, I mean, because remember, the math gets funny because there's only eight slots, right? So if you look at the 41% to the 50%, that's roughly matched, right? That's roughly, yes, it's an increase, but that's roughly matched. You look at Prism, she's 24% to 25%, that's roughly matched. And then you look at, uh, so this right didn't make, didn't make, which is interesting in the top eight. We had the one chain and then we had the one, uh, the one briar, which I think was the, the spicy tech of the weekend, I think a little bit. So that was cool to see as well. So overall, you know, try, so the whole point of this was to say, you know, do we have a healthy meta? Do we not? What do the numbers tell us? I mean, overall, you, you can make a fair number of comparisons to, you, you, you can make a fair number of comparisons to the Vegas meta. But or the chain meta right back from Vegas. But if you go and you look at really the the dominance of chain, I, I think it's pretty clear that Bravo's not at the same level of dominance. But I have to grant you that 
you can kind of go either way on the conclusion based on how you want it to be because you're looking at the difference of one, right? The difference of one, right? The difference of there being four at 50% and five at 63% are, uh, I mean, it's only one, right? But the number becomes. So again, I, I, I get it. You could go either way there to back up what you want your predetermined conclusion to be. But when I look when I look at this, it I, I have to two so two things. Bravo was stronger. Bravo performed better than I thought he was going to. I, I think that's fair. The numbers very clearly show that he is a stronger. I mean, and and again, you look at the living legend points. We all get it, right? But if you look overall at the forty one percent, I think that was. I mean, that's starting to edge up into the dominant category, right? Up into forty percent. Whereas you would expect, you know, a balanced meta to be, and again, 41% versus 33%, right, is, again, not huge because that's, you know, that's just variance a little bit. But, I mean, 40% is is strong. It's strong. Um, and then if you start to look at, I mean, and again, the conversion rates is where it starts falling apart, right? Like, look at Briar. Briar looks like she should be the strongest here, right? She has a 100% conversion rate, but, I mean, you guys get it. Uh, but you compare that to Chain, right? Chain being 45%, so higher than Bravo, and then higher in the top eight, and obviously much more represented in the field. I mean, so is was Chain performing more dominant? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and just because just to avoid the friendly fire, let's say that let's just say for sake of argument that these two are relatively matched in their performance right? The big difference is the number of times you have to play against them, right? That's, that's largely the, the difference here um, with it being a 161, right? So you're going to be, you, you would have run up against chain more often. And, you know, to, to that end a little bit, and I mean, one of the biggest arguments against Starvo, obviously, is how many living legend points he's accumulated, right? Or, which is fair, that said, uh, I think it was Dane from Outcast Haven a couple weeks ago. He made the point. It's like, you know, if if Chain had had the number of events available to him in his day that Bravo did, just based on the timing of release, he made the argument that Chain probably would have already hit Living Legend status. And obviously, there's no way to go back and do that. But I think it's a fair point, right? So... You know, but now the second part of this is okay. Let's say that Andrew's overall conclusion is that Bravo is not as dominant as Chain was, and therefore it's a healthy meta. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a healthy meta, right? You could very well be sitting on the side on the other side of the screen and saying that it's like, well, just because Chain was broken and Bravo is less broken than Chain doesn't mean he's not broken, right? It's a very fair argument you could be making right now, and that's what I was hoping the data would help us show, but I don't think it does. Right, I don't. I don't think that the data shows that he's overwhelmingly dominant, but I also think the data shows that he's definitely the best hero, right? In terms of overall field, which is interesting because I'm really like person on a personal level. I really don't want to see Bravo go away because I don't want to have to play Prism, and I think that there's more field matchups into Bravo than there are Prism, and Prism's gatekeeping a lot of the people out for the Bravo thing, and it's. But isn't that what makes it a good meta to a certain degree, um, not to the getting pummeled to the face, or I shouldn't say pummel, getting, you know, star Captain Planeted to the face every turn. I get that. But so, yeah. So anyway, you, you guys see the data and you can, you can break it down. Um, but I have to say, and maybe this is just because it's still the morning, I don't know that we can make a relevant statement either way that he is busted or if or if it's not or if he's not um he's he's definitely the strongest hero on almost every level mathematically right um but there's the meta portion of that to consider that the field breakdown is way more way more consistent right if uh, versus you know the previous non-healthy meta that we saw so, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, this was a working meeting. I didn't have a script coming into this. Um, I think the conclusion that we have to make here is that he'll probably 
I don't think anything gets done. I mean, I think that I don't think he's I don't think he's busted enough based on this for them to have to respond. But I do think that he will probably handle himself here very sure. I mean, the, the the flip side of him handling himself with the living legend thing is like there's not as many points available, right? So it's going to be a while before he actually gets those points, right? Or even has the opportunity, I should say, to get those points. So that's one um, That's one counter to that is we're probably going to have to see him for a while. And now that he won, now that he had... So that'll be the other part of this is now that he did win, for sure, and now that he's had success. I mean, it's not like Bravo's been a secret, but now that he has won and now that he has had success uh, as the big winner how many people get pulled over to that. I mean, that was the other thing with Chain, is Chain was just cutting through people like a hot knife through butter, so everybody went over to him. Um, we'll see, right? Because there wasn't a lot of, <clears throat> there weren't as many counters for Chain back then, right? So a lot of people just went to him because it was kind of, quote unquote, easy mode. You could do crazy things. Bravo, I think, is also a little more easy. I mean, that's the complaint many people have against him is that he's easy mode. Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of things you can do well, not a lot. There are some things you can do to combat him. Um, but I think Prism, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think Prism really gatekeeps a lot of that. So it's kind of funny. It's almost like if Prism didn't exist, I think Bravo wouldn't. If Prism didn't exist, I think Bravo wouldn't be as good. And then maybe Viserai comes up. and But then don't you have Oldham come into it? And I don't know. It's fascinating. Fascinating discussion. So anyway, I, I, like I said, I, I thought it might be fun to just sit down and look at this and kind of share going through it. Um, overall, I mean, like I said, I think it's pretty clear he's not, the meta's not busted like the chain meta was. We actually have, I mean, the numbers the numbers show that the meta's healthy, but they also show that Bravo's really dominant within said meta. So that's that's the conclusion. There's no argument there. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of comments. Right? So again, there's going to be a lot of comments based on feeling and emotion. I was like, well, he's too easy to play, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. That's fair. I also want to, as we've talked about here before, the trickle down effect of this, right? Having a competitive, having a bet meta that's balanced at the competitive level does not necessarily mean that it's balanced at your local level, um, which is a very valid thing, right? The trickle down effect of the competitive meta into fatiguing your local meta is a very real thing, right? So that's not to be ignored. I'm not dismissing that at all. But looking at the data, I mean, all, all that they can do is go off of the competitive and try to balance. Because if you have a broken competitive format, you're not going to have a broken or you're not going to have a balanced local. So they have to do, I mean, you have to do it top down, right? Even if the trickle down is bad. I mean, there's no other way to do it. So, so fair enough. So, all right. Anyway, let me know. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Do you guys have different conclusions than I am that are based on data, not emotion, right? Just because you don't like Starvo doesn't, change the fact that the meta is more balanced than it has been in the past. Um, and just because you like Starvo and you like the meta being balanced doesn't mean that he's not mathematically not the strong zero, right? So, I mean, so fair enough. Anyway, folks, let me know what you're thinking if you enjoyed tonight. Like I said, it was a working meeting and I got, I got to get ready for work. So uh, I think that'll do it today. I just want to remind everybody we are still playing, still playing. We continue playing at Gungai Games every week. We had 10 for our CC Armory last week, which was pretty great considering a lot of people are, well, considering we had the calling that same weekend and a lot of people are, you know, fatigued out after the ProQuest season. So anyway, that was that was really exciting. So come join us if you're in the area. It'd be great to see you and hang out and uh, play some fab. So anyway, folks, for the rest of you, thank you for tuning in. And for nothing else, go Commando. <laughs>